Well, we're here today to give you what I call a semi-miracle update on Carla's health. Um, what I have in my hand is in four days where we were getting no attention paid to Carla's, um, what was happening with her health, all of a sudden it was like the hand of the Lord. So it started back where Carla was breathing very shallow uh, and it was very labored and we finally went in, long story short, they did a CAT scan and Carla had water in her lung sac or liquid in her lung sac and uh, I'm gonna have Carla kind of pick it up right there. Your first thoracentesis, we know words now that we didn't wanna know, but but your first thoracentesis, which is where they take the liquid out, how much came out? So they put me in the hospital and uh, which, with, which I thought was pneumonia. And uh, the whole time I was in the hospital, uh, I thought I had pneumonia. But they went down other routes. They did a echocardiogram, made sure it wasn't my heart. And then they scheduled out a thoracentesis. And so I went down for the thoracentesis and they actually drained 2.8 liters of fluid off of my right lung. Wow. Which was 2.8 liters, that's, <clears throat> that's a Pepsi and a half, you know, two liter. Wow. Anyway, or almost three. Uh, yeah, so. Well, during so, the procedure, the first thing that happened that Carla didn't tell me till later, we're at St. Luke's Hospital in radiology, and um, they're gonna test the liquid. We don't know yet. They haven't really given us any idea what's going on. And uh, she told me the next day, which brought me to tears, when she was in getting her thoracentesis bent over a table, an angel walked in the room. I'm gonna have her share it. Plus, Carla is singing in her mind the song that all of you know, it's your breath in my lungs. And I went, hon, I wouldn't even have thought to, to say that or sing that. But tell them what happened when you're in the procedure with Scott. So um, an angel that I, that I know, his name is Aramis, he came through the door and uh, came into my room held my hand, you know, while I was having this procedure. And, uh, cause it's not fun, you know, wow. they put a, basically a, a tube in you and drain right. fluid out. Uh, so anyway, that uh, brought me a lot of comfort and um, I just God. know that God, wow. God's got this. Well, so, and that was just before Christmas. And so I'm sitting thinking about all of our, you know, our daughters, and I said, Lord, it would be so cool to have angel necklaces, which all of our daughters, uh, Ariel just had her little girl, Jelly Danielle. I, I got angel necklaces and it, it was so powerful. Uh, and then, you know, we had to look at the test results. We're trying to stay on track here. And they came back and called it peritoneal cancer, stomach lining, stomach area, or ovarian cancer. Um, and then people drop the ball, you know, quite frankly, and it's a good thing we love Jesus and we're praying. Um, you want to talk about that for a minute? Well, I do want to address all of you out there who bombarded heaven with prayers for me when I was in the hospital and we didn't know what was going on. Um, no, no doctors were really very forthright. I mean, they came in asking me a lot of questions, but I, I was under the impression I had pneumonia and uh, wow. the whole time that I was in the hospital. So on the Friday that they actually released me to go home, they had called in an oncologist. And he came to see me and he said, until the fluid results were in, we really didn't know much of anything. Just go home and enjoy the holidays. Well, the urgency and I think that's of her breathing it. was over. It was urgent to get the liquid off so she could actually breathe. And, you know, at night I'm having to check with my hand underneath her nose and her mouth to make sure she's breathing. But That was the scariest part of, uh, of it all, was not being able to breathe. And to have this, once the fluid was <clears throat> drained off, to have it build up again, you know, within right. a two-week period of time uh, to where I had to have a second thoracentesis 
and I had a paracentesis at the same time, which is where they drain fluid off your abdomen. So that happened, and um, but everybody seemed to have dropped the ball, and we won't go into details about it, but God did intervene. Well, and you tell telling the story about Jessica getting on the phone yeah. and running it down, our oldest Jessica daughter. Jessica was in town. Uh, and it was on 27th, so, yeah, yeah, so after on Christmas. Uh, Wednesday after Christmas, the girls all came over, Ariel, Taryn, and Jessica, and they called Dr. Agawa, which is the oncologist that came to see me before I left the hospital. <clears throat> they called his office, and he said, his office said I was not their patient. And uh, which w we, we didn't understand that because Ken had called the day before and they were supposed to call back with, with the possible The lab results, yeah, of and, the, uh, the liquid. So anyway, they said that they had sent my, uh, my records over to a, a gynecological oncologist. So when I saw him, I, I saw this. Well, stop for a minute because Jessica, the nurse, jumped on the phone. Jessica, Matt, and Ariella are on Carla's list. And she blurts out, well, I don't want to repeat all the stuff she said, but your mom has cancer. And I mean, it was on. We go, well, thanks for calling us. Thanks for reading the labs. But uh, I wanted to say this so we don't just go too long. Uh, a friend of mine, uh, Justin Sparks, was elected to the Missouri State Senate. And uh, this guy is fabulous. He's a St. Louis County policeman. Uh, he's just an all-American guy. He said, Ken, I want you to come to Jefferson City, the state capital of Missouri, and to pray for me and pray for us, which is what I did. It's two hours one way. And uh, my son-in-law, Jim Stern, said, Ken, Dr. Rob Hansen is a pediatric oncologist. He's from Destiny, the church that we served at for many years. And uh, he loves you. He loves your worship. And so, again, impulse of the Holy Spirit. And I want to go back to what Carla said about prayer people praying, wow, it covered us. Because when I talked to Rob Hansen, I looked at my phone, it was 26 minutes, I'm on Highway 70, coming back to St. Louis on that Wednesday night. And he says, Kent, they should have started chemo already on Carla to stop the liquid building up. This guy's been doing it for 25 years. And again, he listened very closely, told me what to do. Well, the miracle to me is on his own, led by the Holy Spirit, the Sunday after that Wednesday, he said, I couldn't stop thinking about it. He called Dr. Salasis, which is where we're at now at St. John's Mercy Hospital. At 11.11, which is an important time for Matt and for Carla, for me, it's quadruple God showing up on the scene. But he, he texted me on last Sunday before last, at 11, 11 and got us a 10 o'clock a.m. appointment with a uh, oncologist specialist from Yale University, Romania. This guy is genius. And we're there. We went in four days from having no answers and people not even following up our phone calls to, he said, here's what we wanna do. Let's start the first round of chemo. We have to stop the liquid because if you keep that going, it, Rob told me on the phone, he says, Ken, you know, you are you can suffocate in the night. And so the last week was such a relief to us. That's why today we're doing an update. Um, you know, there, there's many other stories to share, but I'll just do this. So on Monday, 10 a.m., he said, I'll be late, but I'll be there between uh, operations. Taryn and Ariel and I went, and he just went an hour, processed everything. They came into the chemo uh, education and boom, on Thursday, we had a, you know a, a, to go to the David Pratt Cancer Center and do uh, the chemotherapy. Well, again, the liquid was building up. So they put Carla back in the hospital, drained that. Otherwise, they would have canceled that. Here's the miracle to me that they said, you're going to have to take care of your wife the third, fourth, and fifth day. Um, you're probably going to have to feed her. She's going to not be able to get out of bed. It, it's harsh. And so we're in day five, and you're looking at Carla right now. She said, Kent, I'm just, been, Matt, my son, everybody, I'm believing for no side effects. And so far, it's amazing, you guys. So, and, and Matt had come to us and said, we probably need to give an update on Carla's health. Um, let me stop for a minute and say it again. I believe it's because of prayer that we had a breakthrough. Carla, we'd still be sitting at our house dealing with liquid on her lung and her abdomen. And all of a sudden, 
uh, and the, the people were so kind and compassionate. It was very powerful. So four days from zero to 100 miles an hour, and now we'll see what happens. And we also are going on superfoods, organic superfoods, to for Carla's system to defeat it. That is still a possibility. But let me stop for a minute. What else do you we want to share? We are still looking into alternative treatments. But we went ahead and moved on this one because of the fluid situation. We had to. Um, yeah. That was the scariest part for me. And uh, so I had my first chemo treatment on Thursday. Wow. And prior to that, at the other doctor's office, uh, they hadn't even scheduled it and said they couldn't until something passed through the hospital. And it was just a, it was just a, a mess. being put off. It yeah. really was a mess. Yeah. And so God really did lead us in, in that four days. And, uh, and I was able to, uh, to start my treatment. And when I got there, which was interesting, they said, uh, do you want a bed? And I said, sure you know because everybody who gets chemo hours. sits in a recliner yeah and uh, my butt was already killing me from <laughs> sitting around anyway so uh so i was able to actually sleep during most of the process well they gave carla pre-meds and benadryl they said listen it's going to take three to four hours uh, taxol and carboplatin it's going to be a seven hour day and so everything has been a blessing i feel it's been touched by the lord and I want to say thanks to Rob Hansen, the pediatric oncologist, whose office is right next door. Um, he was an intercessor. He interceded. Y'all have been interceding. Wow. He stepped Amazing. in. Amazing. How God used this guy. And he hugged me and says, Kent, this is the way it should work. You should be getting the top care. And I said, Rob, you know, the, the, the precedent sequence or word in the Bible for intercessor is Numbers 21. He had no idea. And it says where the people came to Moses and they said, we have sinned against you and against God. Step in between the good and the evil, the snakes that were in the camp biting them. That's where they raised up the bronze standard and they started being healed. So intercession, again, in our life, we know the power of it. You guys praying, I know it's all been beneficial. We're going to keep praying. We believe God for it. And they said, we want to do three rounds of this. In, in just about another week, they'll take all of her markers and her blood. They take blood. But we felt like we owe people, we owe you as our friends to give you an update. And I so appreciate Matt buying the camera. One other thing, when Carla had to get the third thoracentesis, the lady take... Okay, this is interesting because I did not want another thoracentesis, but I wow. knew I had to because yeah. uh, my abdomen was very distended. I had to go out and buy sweats, literally. I couldn't <laughs> wear any clothes. And uh, and mm. so anyway, when I went down for the procedure, the nurse had an angel necklace on. And we got into conversation during the whole procedure. I was talking to her about angels and it was really wow. amazing. It was, it was wonderful. Well, it's a beautiful thing to be in the hands of the Lord. And I, I kept thinking, God, I see your hand moving. This is truly amazing. And so we want you to keep praying. I'm going to keep doing, uh, you know, our streams, our live streams. We feel it's really important. When Carla feels up to it, which again, this is day five. Take a look. They said it's she should be, be the worst day. Yeah, she, you should be laid out. <laughs> And listen, I'm going the distance. We've been married 47 years. I am so blessed at how the Lord has used us. We've been recounting how through the years, um, I kept leading worship, the Integrity Hosanna stuff, our national worship conference. And so we're here now fighting the good fight of faith, but we have no fear. This is important for people that get a diagnosis. We've never lived in fear. We've been, lived in faith because we are in his hands. We're under the shadow of his wings. This is where we're abiding, under the shadow of his wings. Yeah. And so I'm really glad we did this. I feel this is so important today and we'll get it out to everybody. It was gonna be its own standalone piece for people can check on Carla's health. And every couple of weeks we'll do an update, but understand no fear walking in faith because our days are written in a book. The days of your life are written in a book. And we're not going one day less than our prophetic destiny or one day more. Whatever he designed for us is good. 
Father, we and, pray. And the and, interesting thing, one last thing yeah. I want to say, the interesting thing is that they can't find any masses on the CT scan. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and they have, you know, they've done all the, the testing on, on the uh, female organs and they seem to be There's nothing there intact. Either. So yeah. they are narrowing it down to the peritoneal uh, area. And um, yeah, it's interesting that they can't seem to find it, but it's there, you know, whatever. Well, it's all decreasing. And one other word, because you want to operate in the spirit in these times, as the Lord a couple of weeks ago, after you know first round of the hospital said, can malignant invaders tell them to get out of your wife's body? So we've been praying that consistently. No malignant no, invaders get out of my wife's body. Yeah. That's a point that you guys could actually be praying and say, if there's anything malignant in there, like she said, there's not a massive tuber, tumor or anything like that. So I, we want you guys to just keep believing God and praying that all malignant invaders, any of those cells, get out of Carla's body. And it gives me actually a new resolve to uh, to get on with uh, the videotaping of our right. testimony that I've been wanting right. to do for 40 years. Yeah, so these are really... testimonies and stories that of, of faith. And it, as Carla saw me leading worship as a historian, a spiritual historian, she's actually you know taken down notes and she remembers it we're going to start documenting that here the next few weeks, the next few months. So, hey, we love yeah, you I'll guys. For that. And we're praying strength and refreshing. What's in my spirit right now is back out to you in the Holy Spirit, Acts 319. This is the times of refreshing. These are the times of the refreshing that comes from the presence of our holy God. Acts 319, write it down, make it plain, and let it be uh, on your course the next quarter through March and April into the spring. We are living in the times of refreshing that come from the presence of our God. God bless you guys. God bless you. Thank you all. We'll see you real soon. Peace.